Okay, uh, lesson 5-1. Are you uh, who, has, who collects Roy's gold? Okay. All right, so um, on your assignment, seventh graders, the first part is to compare using the uh, greater than, less than, or equal to sign. And we just went over that. You have to compare the numbers in the same form using a common multiple. So um, on your quiz on Friday, Just take a look at this quickly. On the top section, <coughs> using a common multiple, um, since three goes into nine, you can convert thirds to ninths by multiplying the top of the number by the same, the top number and the bottom number by the same number. So two thirds is six ninths, and that is less than, oops, that was for, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, on your quiz on Friday, just a reminder, you have to write this with the original numbers. You can convert these to fractions with uh, the same denominators. You can convert them to decimals to compare them. You can use whatever method you want to. Remember that the more negative something is, the farther it is to the left, and that means it's less. Okay? Now, um, stop working on this top section because I'm not going to assign that to you. Okay? I'm going to assign you this section, 16 through 21. And so I want to go through that with you, especially the ones with. Um, with variables in them, like 19 and 20, because you're going to have to do one of those on the quiz. So let's go back to your notes. What we're doing is we're finding the lowest common multiple, which is the greatest power of each of the factors that go into these numbers. Okay? So if you're given a number like this with variables in it, these variables have powers. And so you find all the factors by making a factor tree. So to factor 14, there's a 2 times 7 makes 14. Factor 21, 3 and 7 make 21. And so we have to use these numbers in our ingredients. We have to use 2, a 7, and a 3. Now, there's just one 7 in each number. If there were two sevens in one of them, let's say that this one was 40, uh, let's see, 49 times, whatever 49 times 3 is, um, that would be 147, yep, good. I have been there. So, yeah, so if it was 147 and there were two sevens, then we'd have to use two sevens, because that's the greatest power in this number. Use the greatest power of each of the type of factors. Okay? Then, you multiply those together. And then, you use the greatest power of each of the variable factors. So, there's an A squared and an A. Which one would you use? Brett? The A squared. The A squared, yep, because that's a bigger power than the A to the first power. Okay? And there's a B to the third power and a B to the fourth power. Which one would you use? Ariana? Would you use B to the third power or B to the fourth power in your formula? The greatest power b to the fourth power, okay? And then you'd multiply this together, so two times three times seven, which is six times seven, which is 42, 42 times a squared times b to the fourth power. That gives us our greatest, 
or sorry, a lowest common multiple. 42a squared b to the fourth is the answer. Okay? So let's go to your worksheet. And do number 19. Now, the numbers here are simple because 9 goes into 18, right? 18 is a multiple of 9. So we can use 18 as our answer. 9 goes into 18 and 18 goes into 18. Wouldn't it be 9 because it's slow? Uh, but 18 um, is not, uh, 9 is not a multiple of 18. When you're finding multiples starting, you're counting by the number. So you start with the number and you count by 9s and you get 18 in that, right? And if you count by 18s, 18, 36, you don't get nine. So nine is not a multiple of 18, but 18 is a multiple of nine, because it's in the list. When you, when you make a list of multiples, or you count by the number, if the other number is in that list, then it's a multiple. Okay? Now, you also use the greatest power of each of the factors. So the variables. There's an a to the third power and an a to the first power. Which one should we put in our answer? A to the third power. Yay. How about b and b? b to the first and b to the first. Just b to the first. Just b. And there's also a c. So we have to put that in it. Put <laughs> that in the formula. And that's it. Okay. Now, number 20. Number 20 isn't quite that simple. This one is more like the one you're going to have to do for your quiz. So let's do this one together. Let's work it out in the margin. Starting with number 28 and 42, okay? We have to find the factors that are in those. So in 28, there's a four and seven, and a two and two. Two squared. Two squared times seven, right? And then in 42, there's a six and seven, and there's a two and three. So in this one, it's 2 squared times 7. In this one, it's 2 times 3 times 7. Right? Yes. Now, we have to use the biggest power of each factor. So should we use the 2 or the 2 squared? 2 squared. 2 squared. Circle that one. Should we use, uh, there's a 3, so we have to use a 3. And there's one seven in each, so we have to use one seven. So it's four times three times seven to get the number. What's four times three times seven? Anyone? Twelve times seven, which is it's eighty-four. Eighty-four. Good. That's our number. Eighty-four is the number. Now, we have to get the variables in the formula. We have to use the biggest power of each one. What's the biggest power of the x term? Two. So we use x squared in the formula. And what else? Is that how they got R2D2's name? And what else? Y. Y or y squared? And number 19, why? Would, would it be why? B squared? Yep. Would it be B squared then? Is B squared in either of these numbers? These are both These are both B to the first power. We don't have a B squared in it, in any, anywhere in the numbers here. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. 
We've got to move on to 5-2. So take out your notes. We're going to review going from fractions to decimals. And decimals to fractions and mixed numbers. This is pretty simple with a calculator. Yeah. Okay. So write down these notes. If you don't get them all now, you'll have to get the rest of them later. Yes. Now, when you're converting fractions to decimals, you start with the top number and divide it by the bottom number. The top number, the numerator, always goes inside the fraction bar. And if the top number is smaller, the decimal is going to be less than 1. If the top number is bigger, then the, next, the decimal is going to be greater than 1. If you find the decimal and it ends, then you know it's called a terminating decimal. And you can write the decimal pretty easily. If one number repeats, you can write that with the repeating bar above the number that repeats. Okay? Keep writing, keep writing the notes. Do you have to write the example? Uh, you uh, yes, write the example. is also in a four tenths in decimal form. In fact, there's an infinite number of ways to write uh, four, four tenths as a fraction if you include equivalent fractions. Right? Okay, let's take a look at this example here. If we were to convert this number back to a fraction, what you would do is read the number, 375 thousandths. Okay, when you read this and you say the place of the last digit, that place becomes your denominator, 375 over 1,000. So this is the fraction form of this number, but it's not in simplest form yet you'd have to reduce it by um, dividing both by 125. Take out 125 from each number. And then you get 3 eighths. So 375 thousandths is equal to 3 eighths in simplest form. Okay? Remember doing that? So for tomorrow, if you go to your worksheet, I want you to do 2 through 18 evens, starting with decimals, converting decimals to fractions in simplest form. Remember that if the decimal is bigger than um, 1, so for example, number 4 is 2 and 34 hundredths, that's going to be a mixed number. 2, and then the fraction, 34 hundredths reduced to 1750. Nope. Just do 2 through 18 evens. And, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2 through 20 evens. Because I want you to put 1 in order from least to greatest. And then tomorrow we'll. Uh, Work on, I'm going to show you how to work with um, repeating decimals. Okay?